<laughs> it's 6 a.m. I'm stuck in the elevator. I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck. I'm getting out of here. And once I do, I'm gonna go shoot some pictures. So over on my Facebook group, I asked what kind of videos do you guys wanna watch? What sort of things do you wanna see in a video? And overwhelmingly people said they wanna see how to use filters. So while I don't think the conditions are perfect for filtered photography this morning, I'm gonna walk you through all the filters I use, why I use them, how to use them, and what they mean. So we're gonna walk down to the beach here. It's okay, cat. There's a cat freaking out. So obviously before you use filters, you need to find a photo. And I'm down at what they call the beach here on Ciros. It's like a cement, I guess cement slab right onto the coast here. It's actually really cool, but what's cooler than the beach itself is the view back this way. It's almost like, almost like Venetian or what you see sometimes in, in Croatia. You have the houses right onto the sea. And then here you have this cathedral back this way. And there's a couple cool compositions. I think a wide angle lens up here is cool. And maybe a telephoto shot from a little farther back. So I'm gonna go for a little walk back this way and see what I see. So after walking around a bit, I think that a little bit farther back is the better composition, but I think this is better to teach you filters. So I'm gonna set up here. So before I jump into deeper talk about each filter, I think you need to understand filters. And I think the most important thing to understand about filters is ND. What does ND mean? ND is neutral density. Neutral density, essentially, it's just to darken your image. If I slide an ND filter in, it reduces the amount of light that comes through the camera. And the N, neutral, is for the idea that it's supposed to be neutral, it's supposed to be gray, it's not supposed to add some sort of color cast to your image. But the truth is most NDs actually do create some sort of minor color cast. Lee filters are a little bit famous for giving a bit of a blue cast. Others are famous for giving a little bit of a magenta or green look. The only ones I've ever found that were really neutral were the Firecrest filters by Format High Tech. But I had so many issues with them. For example, one time I bought an, an, an ND filter and when it came, the filter wasn't in the case. So I had so many issues with them that I just went back to Lee. Lee's, Lee might not be the absolute best one, but it is probably the most reliable. Now, ND filters are defined based on their stop. So like one stop, two stop, three stops, four stops, carrying on all the way to 10 and even 16 stops. And what that means is how many stops of light does that reduce from getting into your camera? And if you don't understand stops of light, pretty simply, there's three ways to manipulate a stop on your camera, shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. One stop of aperture is like f2.8, to f4, f4 to f5.6, f5.6 to f8, f8 to 11, 16, and so on. Um, with shutter speed, it's basically by doubling the shutter speed every time. So one second, two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds. Every time you double it, you lose a stop of light. And then with ISO, it's the same thing. It's doubling it. It's going from ISO 100 to 200 to 400 to 800. Every time you double it, you gain a stop of light. But just to make things more confusing, ND filters are not always defined by one stop two stops, they're usually defined by a number, zero point. And the way it works is every 0.3 is one stop. So if a grad ND, for example, which we'll talk about later, is 0.3, that's one stop of light. If it's 0.6, that's two. If it's 0.9, that's three. 1.2 is four. This is the Lee 10 stop ND filter. So that's a 3.0 ND. I'm not sure the reasoning behind that, but I'm sure there's good reason. Um, it's getting brighter. So let's start putting some filters on. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got a cool shot set up, I think. Simple, but cool. Obviously, you can use circular filters. They exist. I use square filters. I use the Lee filters. They come with this attachment that goes on the front of your lens. So when you buy filters, when you buy Lee filters or any of the square filter systems, you get adapters that go on the front of your lenses, and then you just put on the adapter, and you pop it on like that and then the filters all slide in. And the reason, the biggest reason I like the square filters is they don't vignette. You use screw-on filters, they tend to vignette a lot. And even if they don't, this is really nice because I just leave the adapters on all the time. And if I switch lenses, I just pop this off and I put it on to my other lens. The meter says F11 0.4 seconds ISO 100. I want to slow that down to about 30 seconds to really smooth out this water as you guys probably know that's kind of my thing. So I'm going to put a six stop ND filter. That's just a pure ND. So I'm on manual right now. As I slide this in, it's going to go totally black. It's completely black. So now I'm compensating for these stops by sliding up my shutter speed. And six stops of light brings me to what looks good at about 20 seconds. And so if I just fire that, I now have a 20 second shutter, which is a massive difference from the 0.4 second shutter. What an ND does, it allows you to slow down the shutter speed or I guess to drop the aperture as well It would be a good reason. There's actually a ton of reasons why to use an ND filter or how to use an ND filter and I think that's a video for a whole other day but usually use it to slow down the shutter speed, to smooth out water or waterfalls or things like that, get motion in traffic. Sometimes you use it to drop the aperture if you're shooting portraits especially and you want to drop the aperture for some reason and sometimes people use them in flash photography photography as well so that they can get their camera down to sinking speed with off-camera flashes <laughs> if they're shooting like in the middle of the day there are some ducks making love in the background some animals have no respect I'm trying to film a video here can you keep it down Wow Okay, so it's getting a little bit brighter in the sky, and I'm gonna throw on the second type of filter. The second type is a grad filter. You can see this. It's dark on the top, it's bright on the bottom. This is a 1.2 medium grad ND filter, and I think grad filters are where people get the most confused. You know 1.2 means four stops? What you don't know is that they come in three different kinds, actually four different kinds of filters. There's the medium grad, which I'll just slide in now. And basically soft, medium, and hard basically define how gradual the transition is from the bright part to the dark part of the image. Soft grads is a really slow transition, so it helps you use it when there's things like mountains or buildings around and you won't get a hard line of darkness. A hard grad has a really hard line straight across, so it can be used when you're on like the sea on coast with flat horizons or the prairies on a telephoto, but that's again another video for another day. And then grad filters, they usually come in one, two, three, or four stops. And when they're talking about stops on grad filters, they're talking about how dark is the darkest part of the grad filter. And if I'm being totally honest, never have I ever used a one stop grad ND. I tend to use three stops more than anything. I use four stops quite a bit, and I'll use my two stop every now and then. But let me slide each one of these filters into the camera just for you to have a look at what uh, what the difference is. So it's getting brighter and basically I'm just evaluating the bottom half of this image for brightness and I've come to 11, F11, 15 seconds, the six stop ND is still in and I'm just gonna slide in these grad filters to show you the difference. Starting with probably the most popular grad filter that people use, the three stop soft grad ND. So as we slide this in, you'll see it on the live view it'll just slowly make the top of the image darker. 
and you can see that transition's really nice and soft so you actually can't tell there's a filter there. So eventually this is probably the filter I'm gonna use. But I'll show you the other two, three, four filters that I have. This is the three stop hard grad. So I use this on my telephoto lens. It has a hard line on the transition. So you'll see when I slide it in, you can see the line is much harder. And sometimes it can be a bit harsh. You can see in the buildings, it's too dark there. There's not enough of a transition. This is the two stop soft, the 0.6 soft. And again, it does that soft grad thing, but you can see it's not taking enough out of the sky. It's pretty close, but needs probably one more stop. And then finally, this is the four stop medium grad. So it's got a medium gradient and it's four stops out at the top. We slide that in, it cuts that down, but as you can see, it's a little bit probably too dark in the sky. So let's shoot a photo or two with this three stop soft grad and see how that comes out. I've switched up my composition to kind of get lower and use some sort of leading line leading straight up to this church. I think it's coming out pretty cool. I've also switched up my ND filter to the four stop medium grad just because it's so bright in the sky right now. And a lot of you are probably gonna ask, how do you decide which filter to use? And I wish there was a better answer than me saying it's trial and error, but essentially that's what it is. It's trial and error when you're starting. You need to look at it through the camera and decide what looks best. How much light do you wanna reduce? There's no magic formula in photography to filters. You go up to your scene and you decide how you wanna manipulate it and how you want it to look. If you're thinking about buying filters, I highly recommend that your first filters be a three-stop soft grad or a three-stop medium grad and a six-stop ND. I shoot the vast majority of my shots on those filters. I also carry from an ND standpoint, I carry a three-stop ND and a 10-stop ND. So I carry four grads and three hard NDs. And I guess that brings me to the final filter, which is the polarizer. So essentially if you're using the square filter system like the Lee system, the polarizer screws right onto the front element that is an extra buy if you're buying filters. Joys, you get to buy lots of stuff when you're buying filters. Polarizers serve a totally different purpose than a regular ND. Yes, you lose a, a stop a light or two when you put one on, but what it does essentially is it cuts the glare or reflection out of things. So in this scenario, I've come really close to the water and the circular polarizer is twisted the opposite way so you're gonna see as I get this set up properly that there's total reflection white stuff on the water and you can't see to the rocks below now if I spin the circular polarizer like this it's gonna totally cut out the reflection completely And polarizers kind of kill the sky a lot of times in certain situations, so you have to be careful how you use them. But if you're trying to cut through glare, there you can't do that any other way. There's no other way. You can't Photoshop that. That's something that has to be done in camera with a polarizer, so they're extremely important for that reason. To give you a great example, if you're in Antarctica, if you go to Antarctica or the Arctic or anywhere there's icebergs and you take pictures, of an iceberg, there's always gonna be this glare on the surface, this reflection on the surface, so you don't actually see anything under the water. If you put a good polarizer on and you have an iceberg in the right light, it actually cuts totally through the surface level reflection and you can see parts of the iceberg under the water. They're also used in a lot of cases to cut glare on cars and automotive photography. They're basically just used to cut reflection all the time. In the right situations in the daytime too, they also make the clouds a little bit punchier. So there's a lot of reasons to use a polarizer. I neglected using a polarizer for years just because I didn't think it was that valuable. And, uh, and, and now that I use one, I find it so, so invaluable. Lots 
lots of talking today, I know, but I think that's how tutorial videos kind of have to be. As much fun as it is to get out in the world and shoot photos, yeah, I think it needs to be walked through and talked through. Uh, I don't think I got photos I love this morning, but it, it's a little bit hard to shoot and do a tutorial, but you guys understand that. One last filter I want to talk about before I end this is the variable ND filter. And I don't have one on. I don't own one. And what a variable ND is, is an ND filter, much like the solar, uh, the circular polarizer, that as you spin it, the ND gets darker and darker. So as you spin it, it starts out at two stops or three stops, and then it can spin all the way to a 10 stop ND. And a lot of people, especially people kind of on a budget, will think of that as a very good alternative to, uh, you know, a whole set of filters. Because in a way, it seems like 10 different filters in one. And I can't argue with that logic. It does make sense. It does work. If you're gonna only want an ND filter and no grad filters or polarizers or anything stacked, sure, that makes sense. Get, an N, get a variable ND filter. But the real reason variable ND filters were created is for video shooters. So using a variable ND filter, video people can walk around as they're shooting and just manipulate the light getting into the camera by spinning the variable ND. By doing that, they can go from bright situations to dark situations without Without having to change the aperture or the shutter speed or anything they just literally use their finger as they're filming their hand cups the camera like this I don't think I'll be able to do this one-handed but their hand cups the camera like this and then they just use one finger on the variable ND to move it around to make sure they have the proper exposure I do think though if you're gonna buy filters invest in the square system because in the long run, it's gonna be cheaper. You don't need filters for every single lens you use. And in my opinion, it's just a better system. You don't need the Lee system if you're starting out and you can't afford it. I used Koken filters for years and years and years. And yes, they do a bit of a bad color cast, but they're cheaper and they get you by. Like I said early on, if you're starting with filters as well, don't go to Lee and buy their big fancy landscape photography kit because it's too much and I don't think it gives you enough for the cost. I would go out, buy a Lee foundation system, the adapters you need for your lenses, a six stop ND, that's the Lee little stopper, and a three stop soft or a three stop medium grad ND. That's all you need to get started. Uh, the final thing I need to say is that filters can, if you treat them well, last forever. This is also by Lee, and just so you guys know, Lee does not sponsor this video. In fact, I have reached out to Lee on two or three occasions, and they've never even gotten back to me. So, no, Lee is not sponsoring this video, I just use their stuff because I like it. This is the filter case system that I use from Lee as well, and it just keeps all my filters in there. I see people packing them around in the original packing all the time to keep them protected. You don't really need that, this case will hold it. I've broken four filters in the past year just from dropping them. That's because I'm clumsy. But other than that, other than just dropping them on pavement, like dropping them straight on pavement or dropping them off cliffs like I did in Iceland, they're pretty scratch resistant. They're pretty durable. I've had this filter, which I dropped once and cracked the top corner. That's the three stop hard filter. I've had that filter for three years. They do last a long time. They are an investment, but I think they're totally worth it. I think that when I started photography, the biggest thing missing was my understanding of filters. And by learning filters and by going out and buying filters, it, it stepped my game up. I became a better photographer because of filters. And I think that's the one piece of kit of all the things I've bought that has made me a better photographer. Upgrading my body didn't make me a better photographer. Upgrading my lenses didn't make me a better photographer. Upgrading and buying filters made me a better photographer. So yeah, that's that. That's the video today. If you have any questions or if I skipped anything or missed anything, or if you wanna see a filter specific video, drop a comment below with any questions you might have or any ideas you might have or any thoughts you might have on filters. I've also written a blog post about filters. So if you guys wanna check that out, there's a link in the description of this video as well. So. That's it, losing my voice from the long talk, and I guess I'll see you guys later today when I start today's vlog. See you there. Peace.